New Balance recently announced the addition of All-American Cooper Flag to the NB family, joining Cameron Brink and an elite player roster in the brand's mission of growing the game with the next generation of athletes. In part of New Balance's ongoing commitment to supporting athletes off the court, the Boston-based brand plans to work with Cooper on community initiatives in his home state of Maine. To shop the two-way V5, Hesse Low V2, and all New Balance basketball products, visit newbalance.com today. Behind those cozy nights at home, thousands of employees at BP go to work every day. People producing more U.S. natural gas. People building grid-scale solar capacity. People turning landfill waste gas into pipeline-quality renewable natural gas. And people delivering all of that power where it's needed. They're part of the more than 300,000 jobs BP supports across the country. Learn more at bp.com slash investing in America. All right, HBCU Legends fans, it's Kyle T. Mosley, and it's week five in HBCU football. We have Coach Daryl Stewart on the line. What's up, Cole? What's up, Mr. Mosley? How you doing this morning? Man, we are ready for a big one down here in H-Town, boy. We got Jackson State rolling in to play Texas Southern at Shell Energy Stadium. They got a lot of good conference battles in the SWAC, MEAC, CIAA, SIEC. It's good, man. It's football time. How you doing, man? Oh, man, it's a it's a big controversial weekend. Football, a lot of games, big big time games being played. Uh, a lot of controversy going on in sports. Uh, man, it's a great weekend for football. Yeah, it is a good weekend for football. Guys, go to HBCU Legends, and you can be able to check us out on all the social media platforms there, or you can check us out at hbclegends.net, where you can go directly to our Sports Illustrated articles, and you can check the podcast that we have here on all of the major platforms like Spotify, uh, you got also Red Circle, and you can go on YouTube as well. You can check us out. The podcast is everywhere, and thank you for the support. Uh, you know, we, we just continue to grow, and I, I look at the numbers all the time and tell uh, that coach, you, you guys are really blessing us, and keep up the great work, and keep up sharing is caring share our podcast with a lot of people so we can be able to get to you guys and share our thoughts but also share you some important information about what's happening in hbcu sports coach did i miss you no sir i I thought i lost you there man well coach before we go into hbcu sports man i know you were talking to me about what's happening with the coaches uh we had teresa witherspoon who was the coach for the chicago sky and angel reese expressed her discontent for the decision that the Chicago Sky higher ups made to terminate her after one season of being the head coach of the team. What is your thoughts there? Oh man, I just think Mr. Mosley, we as coaches, head coaches and CEOs now, uh, the D'Amico Ryan effect is going all not just football, but basketball as well. Owners now think you could do the job in year one just like he did Um, no matter what sport you are pertaining to it could be basketball football uh, uh, WNBA volleyball the bottom line is now you have to be careful of what job you choose Mr. Most and you know we talk about these big time jobs all the time you're talking about Chicago Sky Chicago Bulls big time city in basketball Uh, they put basketball first it's a mega uh, money driving uh, sport for that particular city, and I, you know, I don't think Coach uh, Teresa Witherspoon did a, a bad job. You know, I just think one 
you know, those big jobs, Mr. Moses, just got to be careful to take it. You know, we talk about the Grammars, the Southerns, the Jacksons, and fam, you, you know, a lot of head coaches want those jobs, but are you ready for that in year one? And I just think right now, you know, when they uh, drafted Angel Reese, and, and Carmelo Cadoso, though you know those big time draftees, you know they were looking for a playoff boost, and um, the pros are different. You know uh, the contracts are different. Um, I don't know what occurred with ownership, but you know what I'm hearing throughout the uh, WNBA landscape is, it's probably gonna be, and this is just the source that I'm hearing. Either uh, Don Staley or Kim Monkey is going to be the uh, because the money is there now, and uh, they have the money to pay whoever they want, and so uh, it, you know this is what's going out there right now. Uh, it could be Don Staley or Kim Monkey as the next head coach of the sky, but I think Coach Spoon will land back on her feet. It's just those big jobs for some strange reason, Mr. Moses. You got to be careful in taking them. If you're not ready, let me play devil's advocate here. If I'm Mulkey and if I'm Don Staley, why would I go to a situation where the ownership after one season gave up on a season WNBA professional as well as NBA professional like Teresa Weatherspoon? Well, for one, um, the money's bigger. I mean, I don't care what it is. But they cry like, but, uh, I'm sorry, but they cry money. as though there's no money in the WNBA. These owners, they don't want to really pay the, the players. They don't want to pay these coaches. So why, if I'm Mulkey and, and, and Dawn Staley, who making, what, 4 or $5 million a year plus endorsement deals, why would I go to this situation? Well, you know, for one, when you talk about being a general manager and a head coach, I think that's the route that they're going to take if, if getting uh, big-time head coaches like Kim Monkey and um, Don Staley. Um, they're going to have to at least give them the general manager position and the head coach position. But the money is there in Chicago. They have plenty of money. Um, they're one of the top top five franchises in the WNBA. Um you know, I just think they need um, a revamp of their whole organization for us basketball-wise. Now, when you when you read the interview of them releasing Ter Teresa uh, Witherspoon, the things that she did, the things that she didn't do, the things that they looked at, during the season, Kyle, she had a chance to trade. And when you looked at her team, I would have traded me because she didn't really have guard play. She didn't have good guard play. As a head coach, she's supposed to know that. Now, I don't know what went on. You know, I know she had to get it clear through the ownership. But, you know, and then you see some falling off, um, you know, up and downs between uh, games. You know, they they. They were almost there, but they couldn't quite get it done. And I just think if she would have made the playoffs, I think she would still be the head coach. But due to the fact that she didn't make it, I think that carried over to them saying, okay, let's go a different route. And I'm not saying that she doesn't have another opportunity because they have several job openings, and I'm quite sure she'll run it on her feet. I'm just saying – we talk about it all the time. These big term jobs, your D'Amico Ryan effect is here and it's in effect. You gotta win year one. You going to LA, you gotta year one, or you gotta win year one. You going to Chicago, you gotta win year one. Houston, year one, New York, year one. These are big mega driving money booster cities that they just can't afford to lose. Okay, if I'm principal owner Michael Alter, right, and the co-owner right. is an operating chairman, Nadia Rollison, and Jeff Palika, I think that's how you say it, Jeff Paliki, Paliago, whatever, <laughs> <laughs> he's the general manager. 
if you're evaluating your team, aren't there the decision makers to say we, we need to change our personnel during the middle of the season if we still have a shot at getting to the WNBA playoffs? Aren't they the ones who override what Teresa Witherspoon wants? And I know you said the guard play was the issue. You had Angel Reese, who did a tremendous job setting records as a rookie coming in to help rebound and get them, you know, a presence underneath the basket. You had Camelia or Cardosa, who was the center, and at, she began the year on the bench because of that shoulder injury, right? right. Um, and if you look at all of this, and, and even going down the stretch when Angel Reese had wrist issues and she had to miss the remainder of the season, is this all Teresa Weatherspoon's fault? Um, Kyle, I'm going to tell you what Eddie Rob used to tell me. Uh, injuries, troubles, uh, dysfunction of the organization, everything is going to boil down to the head coach. I mean, no matter what, you know, if you you uh, miss curfew, if, you, uh, if your players are not mentally able to play right, everything is going to boil down on the head coach. And when you look at this prestigious position that she has, in the in the great city of Chicago, a basketball driving city, all that plays a part into it, whether you look at it or not. Now, is is this whole situation Teresa Weatherspoon's fault? No, it's not. We know that. But just like the Dallas Cowboys, if they don't get it together, Jerry Jones just had a meeting <laughs> said he go he, he gonna make some moves. Yeah. And so and you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't have anything to do with Teresa Witherspoon. This is has everything to do with these big jobs. I think if she was at uh maybe one of the uh the team like I think if she was in Atlanta, I think she would have a, another year. You know, I'm I'm just saying these big money jobs, I mean, they're not going to give you time to do it. And I think us as head coaches and CEOs need to know that before we go into these mega cities. And, and you know, we're happy to get the job, but are you ready for what's really about to hit you in the job? And I just think right now that that's what they looked at. And uh, if they get Kim Monkey or Don Staley, uh, you know, it's going to be a big mega deal, but, you know, you, you're probably going to um, look at to give, giving either one of them the general, general manager or head coach role as well to get one of them. But that's what I'm hearing right now, and if it could happen, um, because you just don't let, like you said, you don't let a Teresa Wellspoon go right now. So uh, let's just keep our ears open to what's about to take place. Okay, if I'm... A uh, Teresa Witherspoon, I'm going to be asking questions. Why, what type of, how can you help me become a better coach? Right. That, and that's what the failure, I believe, at the top was. If you have the personnel or you think there's some changes necessary in the personnel, there's something else that's going on behind the scene that that leadership failed her and failed the team as well. You don't in the first season, it's just like when you're first dating somebody. If you don't, there's expectations on both sides. But if you don't communicate the expectations and be consistent with your communication about the expectations or to be able to allow that person to evolve into what they need to become, that's a problem. I, I, heard, I saw Angel Reese said she believes that Teaspoon was too nice to the players at times. Is that the issue, that you want somebody see, more hard, hardcore or what? And see, Kyle, that statement 
you know, and I know Angel Reese didn't mean nothing about 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 that statement, but that statement hurt when you look at it from a, a business point of view, because that says as a coach, you have no control of the team. Now, during her period of time, what she should have done. I never saw the team right? out of control. But what, did you? Well, that, I mean, when you look at a statement of one of your star players say something like that. What do you what do you take from it? I mean, I'm too nice. That means the players are running it, you know, doing what they want to do in practice. What I mean, what the do players I players are running the muck. <laughs> <laughs> They're running the muck. <laughs> I, I hear you, coach. All right, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that part later, but we gotta go to our next segment. Uh I, I just believe that's a failure up top, in my opinion. Coach. Right. And you see this in college sports as well. Guys, we have a new sponsor that's Fantasy Guys over at Underdog Fantasy. So check them out. We'll be back in two and two. I'm Kyle T. Mosley of HBCU Legends. It's the greatest time of year again. Football is back and it's here to stay till February. As a fantasy owner, I love Underdog Fantasy. Win up to 1,000 times your money just by choosing higher or lower on a favorite player's stat. For example, touchdown, passing yards, and more. I love Underdog because it's so easy and fast to get started and play. And you have the ability to win some real money while rooting for your favorite players. Making picks on Underdog is straightforward and signing up is even easier. Just head over to Underdog's simple to use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com, sign up with the promo code HBCU Legends, and Underdog will give you a free pick to use on your first cash pick'em entry, plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. That's Underdog Fantasy, promo code HBCU Legends, to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer. Must be 18 years or older, 19 years or older in Alabama and Nebraska, 19 years or older in Colorado for some games, 21 years or older in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned about your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.org. In Arizona, go to 800 Next Step. That's 800-639-8783 or text Next Step to 53342. In New York, call the 24-7 Hope Line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope ny Four six seven three six nine. Enjoy your fantasy play with Underdog. All right, Kyle T. Mosley here with Coach Daryl Stewart. We talked a little bit at the beginning of the responsibility of a coach like Teresa Witherspoon, but it also goes down into the HBCU coaches. And I want to ask you at this point, Coach, we're looking at week five in HBCU football. And week five through seven is critical. usually the critical times where you start to see the cream start rising to the top, right? right. And then week eight, nine, ten, that's separation uh, Saturdays, they call those, right? But right, right now, the cream is rising to the top. Who are some of the contenders? that we didn't think were going to be contenders before, and who are some of those pretenders? Let's start with the pretenders first. Who are those teams that we thought were going to be at the top of some of these conference standings, and at this moment, they're not? Well, definitely right now, when you look at what Jackson State losing to Grambling last week was a big blow. Um, I think right now, to well, I know right now, uh, today is a must-win game for Coach T.C. Taylor and his team. And it's you a know, dangerous uh, game for them right now. Yeah. It's a dangerous game. Uh, losing this game for him um, with the magnitude that Jackson State has and their fan base, alumni, uh, it's a must-win game for him because if he doesn't win, players are going to be disgruntled. 
fans are going to be upset and he's going to have a problem. And so uh, Jackson State is one. Also Alabama State. Alabama State uh, didn't do a great job with the quarterback room. Um, I'm, I'm not going to say it was all the coach's fault, but when you bring in a quarterback like Andrew Body that can throw the ball and run as well, uh, you have to know what, what's out there on the field, what your talent can do. And, I mean, by him being a leading rusher, then him getting hurt, you know, I, I just think right now that those two teams uh, are very disappointed right now. And, um, they're in critical positions because if they, if they lose one more time, then, you know, you, they're probably out of the race. So let's hope that these two teams can get it together, Kyle. <laughs> and I'm going to be in Alabama State next week to cover their homecoming. So I'm going to have a discussion with Coach Eddie Robinson Jr. Get to see <laughs> Mr. Andrew Body, who his mom posted his rehabilitation photo uh, week two, she said. That's week two that he's going into his rehabilitation. He had surgery to not fix and repair guys. He had surgery to enhance the – uh, rotator cuff. That's that's the misnomer. People were like, oh, he got injured and he tore it again. No, he did not re-tear the rotator cuff. It just was some – the initial surgery didn't do what it was supposed to do, so they went in to enhance that shoulder. That's what it was. Okay, so, Coach, if you look on top of the SWAC, let's start with the SWAC right now, SWAC. East, you talked about Jackson State at this time. They're 2-2 two and two altogether, and the conference is 0-0. Um, not any of the conference play for that division starts until today, right? right. And Alabama State still is 1-2, and two, but for the conference, 0-0. But if you go to the West, what's concerning – to me, the the guys that we thought were going to be on the top, a lot of people predicted Alcorn State, they're one and three total, O and O in the conference. That's a concern, wouldn't you think? Right. right. Prairie View, who won SWAC West, now opened the season a loss to Texas Southern, a loss to Southern. They're one and three for the season. And they're playing Grambling today up in Dallas at the State Fair. If they lose that game, they'll be 0-3 in the conference, and it's lights out, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. Very much. You know, uh, these teams, man, you know, uh, <laughs> you can blame NIL all you want, which, you know, like I said, some of these coaches are going to have a uh, point to argue about. But definitely – Talent plays a big part in it, and um, when you look at our top teams like Alcorn and Preview, um, they just don't have the talent this year. Um, I had a chance to see both teams play. Um, they're lacking at the quarterback position, and a lot of teams are lacking at the quarterback position. But uh, no excuses. Um, I don't think the presidents are going to want to hear that or the AD. So. Uh, but is it a, a way to get it done? But is it a lack of talent at Prairie View when you're leading that? Well, game one, Texas Southern just took it to them. They were more physical. And they right. beat them. B- bottom line, that was a, 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 an L from the second quarter on down. And I watched the game. I was there. But the Prairie View Southern game to lose it in that fashion. Was that a breakdown more on the offensive side or defensive side? Uh, I think it was both. I mean, you know, uh, they're not a balanced team the way you look at them, look at them, Kyle. You know, they're up and down. And, uh, and talent plays a part in it. You know, uh, they're a young ball club, and the, the talent is just not there. Well, uh, in- well I, and I, I'm saying it like this, man. Coach – Bubba McDowell, who's a friend of our program, but coach said his defensive line was his 
most improved line. It doesn't look like it. No, no, it doesn't. The offensive line is leaky at times. But the offense was putting, really having their way rushing the football against Southern, then all of a sudden they went away from it. Is that the offense or coaching? It's it's coaching. You know, when you're frustrated at it, so right now, this is the problem. He's trying to find his team. You know, what can they do best? And he's doing it at the most critical time, during the game. You know, uh, you, you wow, really need to do it game, during right. practice. Yeah, <laughs> right, 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 right. That's a so, great point, Coach. Yeah, yeah so, uh, you know, it's frustrating right now when everybody expects you to be in the big dance. I mean, you, you, you're you dealing with all these different challenges as the head coach, and you have to be mentally ready for the, the uh, task at hand as well. And so, uh, you know, I know Coach McDowell, he's a great coach, um, but, you know, right now, I just think the uh, the talent level is not there. Ooh wee, coach, they got to do it. If they don't pull it off this game, I don't think it's any way back to the top of the swack, the wacky swack west. We call it here. <laughs> <laughs> it's the wacky swack west, and uh, because you got Gramlin who's surging, Gramlin is surprising. Everybody. So let's talk about some of the contenders right now. You look at Grambling State, what they're doing. We know Florida A&M is uh, going to be Florida A&M. Uh, but Grambling and could Southern and Texas Southern be in a three-way race for that division crown? Um. So I'm glad you brought up Graham. Okay. You look at Coach Mickey Jones. Comes from a football family. Um, a New Orleans uh, king for his football, you know. He grew That's up right, in the baby. Area. That's right, babe. That's right, babe. You know, he grew up in the area. He, he know went through the high school ranks, worked his way up our way. Uh, worked at LSU, worked at Nebraska, been a head coach. Um, you look at his approach, and I know Mickey. You know, his approach is very different, and he knows what type of job. First of all, he knows what type of job he has. He knows he had to win in year one. So he has a great strategic plan. When you look at the talent that he has, specifically on defense, uh, Gramlin is lights out on defense. Um, he knows what he has to do. And I think his approach and his team knows what they have to do. And I think if they win today, Kyle, uh, I think Gramlin's going to win the West outright. So, uh, I mean, it's just too much talent on the team. Uh, he's not asking Miles Crowley to do too much. He asked him to manage the game and not turn over the ball. And that's what he's doing. He's managing the game well. He's not turning over the ball. And I just think right now the approach and the plan that Mickey Joseph has has Grambling on the right track. That game against Texas Commerce, where they had to come back and rally in that fourth quarter to tie the game, and they eventually won the game in that walk-off interception. I point to that one game as a pivotal game for that Tigers team. And that team, from there, gained a lot of confidence. Right. If we see that same team today, and if they defeat Prairie View, yes, I have to agree with you. Gramlin can take that division. Can they take the whole swack? And the main competitor will be Florida A&M. How do you think they match up at this time? They match up real well because when you look at what Grandma is doing on offense, they're not asking Miles to win the game. They're asking him to manage the game. And I think his approach, like I say, Coach Mickey Jones, uh, he's going to have a great game plan, and he's going to be ready to play. And he took some – what he did was take a lot of pressure off the quarterback position. And it's working out for him well because their defense had three turnovers, two for touchdowns against Jackson State. Same way the week before against Texas uh, A&M Commerce. So his plan and his approach 
has Miles feeling more comfortable in the position. Um, he has him already in line for the HBCU Legacy Bowl. And he, you see a more focused quarterback. He's not forcing throws. Um, if it's not there, he's throwing it away. He's not taking sacks. So he, he just put a great plan together for his Grambling team because the talent is there. And um, he has them in line. Like you say, if they win today, I just don't see because his defense really – he put all his talent on defense. And Mickey Joseph knows defense win championships. And so uh, Grambling right now, if they win today, uh, I just don't see anybody beating them on the west side. West side? All right. <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> <laughs> yay, yay. Uh, man, look, Jackson State right now, top offense in the SWAC. Grambling is number two. Pine Bluff, number three. Southern, number four. Alabama A&M, number five. Top defense in the SWAC. Alabama State, number one. Southern, number two. Grambling State is four. Jackson State, three. Sorry to skip over you guys. And Prairie View, five. So right now you got the number four and number five defense are playing the offenses, but the offense for Prairie View is ranked number eighth. Inconsistent, like you're saying, they're only scoring 17 and a half points per game. Uh, where you have Grambling State is scoring 30.8 points per game. You have to give the advantage to Grambling. I think it's probably a seven and a half point favorite, in my opinion, going into this game. Uh, what's your thoughts? Oh, yeah. You know, when you look at uh, the balance that Grambling has right now on both sides of the ball and they're playing well in all three phases of the game, uh, he's the most balanced team in the conference right now. And so, when you know, you go into a big game, it's going to be a big crowd. Uh, and now that they have the jitters off their shoulders, because they had a big crowd last week against uh, Jackson, um, I think this team right now is playing with a lot of confidence. Can't go in too emotional because if you're in Dallas, probably going to be sold out. And so, uh, but the, what's on the line is championship. And one thing about Grambling, when they know that championships are on the line, they play well. Uh, I just think Grambling's going to be too much for Prairie View today. I got Grambling winning 28-21. Okay. We'll be back in 2-2 two and two with our sponsor, Factor Meals. Hi, I'm Kyle T. Mosley of HBCU Legends. Look, warmer, sunnier days are calling. Fuel up for them with Factor's No Prep, No Mess Meal. Meet your wellness goals in time for summer thanks to the menu of chef-crafted meals with options like Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. So no matter how busy you are, you always have time to enjoy a nutritious, great-tasting meal. Make today the day that you kickstart a new healthy routine. What are you waiting for? With 35 meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from from every week, you'll always have new flavors to explore. Crush your wellness goals this month with dietitian approved meals and ingredients that you can trust. Make your day delicious from breakfast to dessert. Stay fueled with easy, nutritious options. Treat yourself to restaurant-quality meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, as well as blackened salmon. Keep kitchen time to a minimum. Factor meals are ready in two minutes. No shopping, prepping, cooking, or cleaning. Enjoy effortless support for your lifestyle. Choose from six menu preferences to help you manage calories, maximize protein intake, avoid meat, and simply eat well-balanced. Head to factormeals.com slash HBCU50 and use code HBCU50 to get 50% off your first box, 20% off your next month's. That's code HBCU50 at factormeals.com slash HBCU50 to get 50% off your first box, plus 20% off your next month while subscriptions are active. All right, Cole, we are back. We're still talking about some of the major matchups today to expect in HBCU football. We just spoke about the Prairie View versus Grambling game that's taking place in Dallas, Texas. and But we have a big one here in the Houston area where Jackson State 
is rolling into town. I saw, man, you know, you know, I rolled over to Texas Southern yesterday, and I saw Jackson State's big old 18-wheeler rolling off the Texas Southern campus. I was like, oh, that's roll. That was kind of deep, man, to see yeah. that blue uh, 18-wheeler coming off Texas Southern's campus. I guess those guys were taking the practice field, you know, and in tuning up for tonight's game. But Jackson State, you say that's a must win against this Texas Southern team. Uh, Texas Southern's offense right now only is producing 17 points per game. And Jackson State, of course, 31.3. They're at the top of the swag. But Jackson State's defense is pretty good as well. But they are surrendering 27 points per game. And they just are smarting I mean, 23 points per game. I apologize. They're smarting off a winnable game last week, but they lost big time to Gramlin. Uh, you know, with Gramlin hung a 40 burger on them. So, how can Texas Southern win this game? Because Texas Southern's defense is number six, but they also have been surrendering 32. Point seven points per game against their opponents, but those big opponents that they lost to was the big game against Rice where they put 60-something points on the board, right? Yeah. Um, other than if you take that Rice game out the equation, they lost a heartbreaker against Lamar last week, and Lamar scored, what, just, what, 16 points, 16, 17, 18 points, something to that nature, right? So Texas Southern is not that bad on defense, right? So right. we got two Tigers. We got to battle the Cats that they're going to collide today. Do you actually believe that Texas Southern can pull the upset? Well, you know, a lot of people say Jackson oh, State has problems I, right now. I apologize. You know? And Cooper, K.J. Cooper, is expected to come back and play for this game. That's okay. another element. Go ahead. You know, a lot of people say Jackson State has quarterback problems. You know, uh, they went in last week. You know, Coach Taylor rotated two quarterbacks as well. I'm not a fan of it. I don't know why a lot of these coaches are doing that. Rotating two quarterbacks, uh, I believe in just having a starter. Uh, eventually, though, uh, they don't know who the starter is. And uh, I don't know. Uh, I've got word that we don't know who's going to start at quarterback today. But if I was him, I would start Jacoby and Morgan because uh, you, you give him a court three chance, and all three he's either gotten hurt or something detrimental has happened. And I don't want to say the kid is injury prone, but um, I believe in the three-strike rule. And um, for some strange reason, um, Jacoby Morgan is not starting. And I just think right now, if he takes that approach into this Texas Southern, which has a dangerous, dangerous defensive ball club, um, I think they'll have a chance to win the ball club, win the ball game, because guess what? It gives a coach like Coach Dishman uh, the warning sign, Kyle. Okay, he doesn't know who his quarterback is. Coach Dishman is a great defensive-minded coach. He's going to throw blitzes at If you switch in quarterbacks um, doing this Texas Southern dangerous defensive team, they're going to know you're not decided or you're not confident in your offense. And I just think Coach Taylor has to go in. Whoever he starts, He's going to have to have the game plan ready for that particular one quarterback. If he switches quarterbacks in and out, he's going to have a long day. Wow. <sighs> New Balance recently announced the addition of All-American Cooper Flag to the NB family, joining Cameron Brink and an elite player roster in the brand's mission of growing the game with the next generation of athletes. 
In part of New Balance's ongoing commitment to supporting athletes off the court, the Boston-based brand plans to work with Cooper on community initiatives in his home state of Maine. To shop the two-way V5, Hesse Low V2, and all New Balance basketball products, visit newbalance.com today. Experiences make life more meaningful. With MasterCard's Priceless.com, you can immerse yourself in unforgettable experiences in dining, sports, entertainment, and more in over 40 exciting destinations. From golf with a legendary player, a cooking class with a celebrity chef, or getting on the field during the 2024 MLB postseason. Fuel your passions and create memories with experiences on Priceless.com. Explore experiences today at Priceless.com, exclusively for MasterCard cardholders. Terms and conditions apply. With Robinhood Gold, you don't need a silver spoon to eat up the financial favors of the 1%. Robinhood Gold allows a resourceful individual to earn the very liberal rate of 4.5% APY on uninvested cash, receive unlimited 1% deposit bonuses, and be rewarded with a handsome 3% retirement boost on an IRA account. Get the privileges of the high net worth for any net worth for just $5 a month. Sign up at Robinhood.com gold. Terms apply for product-specific disclosures. Visit Robinhood.com gold. Investing involves risk. Rate may change. Gold membership is offered by Robinhood Gold. LLC. If you don't have a quarterback, you don't have. You don't have none. Mm-hmm. And you know, you look at. You know, I was told. You know, Alabama State and Bethune game was counsel, right? Mm-hmm. But they had an opportunity to say, "Oh, Bethune could have played in Montgomery." But due to the fact that neither team has a quarterback, they decided to counsel the game. <laughs> The so, book, but, I mean, it's uh, like you said, Kyle, if, if you don't have a quarterback, these coaches are not crazy. If you don't have a quarterback, man, you don't have nothing. Uh, it gives them another week to breathe calmly, to take some of the pressure out. <laughs> but, man, it, it's it's a weird time in HBCU football with uh, all these teams just don't have a quarterback. Okay, let's move on to the MEAC. We're looking at some good – matchups uh that the MEAC has but there's only one real conference game that's being played in MEAC today everything else is outside of the MEAC and that's Norfolk State versus North Carolina Central and coach that's a big one in a lot of ways right because it's also what they call the celebration of National Hispanic and Latin Heritage Month, uh, the classic game for the Circle City Classic. And <laughs> I'm just looking at this game where NCCU, of course, is the favorite, but this has to be, if there's not a good showing for the Spartans and Coach Odom's, this has to be one of those games where you say, will the leadership decide to, to move on? I'm not caught. And I don't want to see that happen for Dawson Owens, but because he's a great coach. But this has to be one of those games that they don't really compete against North Carolina Central. Don't You have to be able to make some decisions, right? Right. Well, Kyle, you know, this is the teacher versus the student. You know, uh, I remember when uh, Dawson Mullen was the head coach at Southern University and um, Trey Oliver was his defensive coordinator, also was his linebacker coach. Um, These two uh, great coaches been together for years. Um, This is going to come down to who makes the least mistakes in the ball game. This is going to be a motion of game, Kyle. Uh, anytime you have two rivals playing in the Circle City Classic, a big sold-out game, HBCU game in Indianapolis, it's going to have a lot riding on it. And um, these two teams are going to be emotional. You're going to have to take some of the emotions out because these are big crowds. And one thing about HBCU players, they love playing in big crowds. So don't want to do anything stupid to get a lot of penalties. But I'm like you, Kyle, the, the, the amount of pressure that's on Coach Dawson Odoms right now is unbelievable. Um, they're looking at it. And he has a great team. He has a great team. He could easily be in the hunt for the MEAC championship. And so I, I just think, you know, if he wins today and stays in the hunt, uh, he's going to stay at Norfolk. But 
I don't think he can afford to lose as well. Yeah. So keep your eyes on that game, guys. Uh, South Carolina State will go against North Carolina A&T. North Carolina A&T is a program that's struggling at this time. And a lot of people have expressed their concerns about what's happening at A&T because we knew from years ago, especially when Coach Washington was at the helm, A&T was a powerhouse. How do you see what's going on at A&T right now? Are you concerned? Um. I, I know one of the big time boosters there, uh, uh, Kyle. It, it's a dangerous atmosphere at A&T right now. Um, you know, I don't want to say that they're going to be looking at changes, but uh, they're getting things ready. From what I'm told, to move in a different direction. Um, they haven't seen anything like it. Um, I don't. I, you know, I don't want to say Coach Benson Brown was not ready for this position. I just think right now, man, these these coaches uh, are taking big jobs and not really ready for them. And, um, you know, you, you learn, Kyle, but this is not one of the jobs that you learn on. Well, look, so, let, let me ask you this, man, because I, I thought the leadership, the athletic director, when they hired Coach Brown, they said they wanted somebody who – had one stability, previous coaching experience, and can be able to mature and help young men grow, right? I, right. I recall that press conference. Has Coach Brown ever been a big winner before? No, he hasn't. And you also know that they've had president change. Hmm. So, you know, anytime you got new presidents coming in, you best believe they're going to bring their own people. And so, uh, you know, uh, not saying that, you know, because Coach Brown has done some good things. But, you know, I just, you know, Kyle, I'm a firm believer in, you know, you have to take the right job. And, you, you know, I just think right now, you know, and when you look at the, the critical time in his career, he's at the ending point. You know, he, he's in his, what, early, 50, late 50s. And so he has Hey, to be, hey, man, there ain't nothing wrong with the late 50s. Well, you uh, know, man. Oh, man, you stepping on my toes. <laughs> hey, 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 Kai, uh, the words of the great LC code, it's hot out there, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, uh, hey, you, it's only so much longer you're going to be able to take that summertime heat. And, uh I'm just saying right now, I just think it was a uh, the wrong job for Coach Vincent Brown in his career. All right. Um, uh, with all that pressure and winning year one and year two that they put on you, uh, some jobs are just not the right fit. And so, uh, you know, let's just hope he gets in the right situation so uh, he can have a productive career. All right. I think I have to make a visit to HR and uh, talk about this age discrimination that coach is pointing out here. <laughs> we, we'll talk to you later about that, coach. Uh, no, nah, but seriously, in all seriousness, man, I, I, I think some of these programs and some of these schools make bad decisions. I, I just want to be – let's just put it out there, coach. Right, right, right. Why bring in somebody who hasn't been a big winner before? And it's been uh, because you want stability and you want to look like you're doing a conservative thing because A&T has a beautiful campus, great resources, one of the more well-funded HBCU schools in all of HBCUs, right? Especially right. Why go this route? And that's what I couldn't understand with the hire. I'm not saying he's not a good coach. And like you said, he's had some very competitive games at time. But losing 66 to whatever against NCCU was a – that was a bad a spot. Goal. And yep. that, that stadium – and usually that – Eagle Aggie Eagle Classic is a well sold out game. Right. They said the attendance wasn't well. 
Yeah, it, it, it's just they're having a lot of problems right now, specifically with football. And, um, you know, I'm going to let their boosters and <laughs> president uh, make the decision on that. But uh, like I said, Kyle, you know, uh, certain jobs and HBCUs. You know, I had a coach last night at a high school game, NFL guy. Hey, coach, what do you think about this? I said, hey, man, have you ever coached before? Well, yeah, yeah, but have you ever been a head coach? Never been a head coach. And you know, you know, a lot of people don't understand experience is the key. You know, and I give them example. A lot of people, Kyle, don't you know a lot of people didn't know Coach Prime was a high school head coach? Yeah, that's They're amazing. Thinking he came straight it, was it was all on yeah. TV. It was all on TV. I was like, how can you not know that? You know, that's what I told the guy last night. I said, hey, man, Prime was a high school head coach in, in um, Texas. State champion, years. right? Yeah. And so, you know, that helped him. If you ever talk to him, he'll tell you how high school prepared him for Jackson State and prepared him for Colorado. And these some of these guys right now are just living a dream. I understand that you really want to be a head coach, but you got to go up the ranks. And and that's one thing when I see Coach Mickey Joseph and, you know, Nick Saban, all these guys, I'm going to reach out and tell them we need to preach going up the ranks more to a lot of these coaches because I, I know they're, they're hungry and eager to be a head coach. But guess what? You got to go up the ranks. Go up the ranks so you won't make these mistakes and so you won't get fired year one. <laughs> so, <you laughs> okay know. all right that's a good point coach right. we, <laughs> we're going to be back in two and two from a after these words from our sponsor i'm kyle t mosley of hbcu legends it's the greatest time of year again football is back and it's here to stay till february as a fantasy owner I love underdog fantasy. Win up to 1,000 times your money just by choosing higher or lower on a favorite player's stat. For example, touchdown, passing yards, and more. I love underdog because it's so easy and fast to get started and play. And you have the ability to win some real money while rooting for your favorite players. Making picks on underdog is straightforward and signing up is even easier. Just head over to Underdog's simple to use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com, sign up with the promo code HBCU Legends, and Underdog will give you a free pick to use on your first cash pick'em entry, plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. That's Underdog Fantasy, promo code HBCU Legends, to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer must be 18 years or older 19 years or older in alabama and nebraska 19 years or older in colorado for some games 21 years of older in massachusetts and arizona and present in a state where underdog fantasy operates terms apply void in colorado concerned about your play call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.org in arizona go to 800 next step that's 800-639-8783 or text next step to 53342. In New York, call the 24-7 Hope Line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. Enjoy your fantasy play with Underdog. All right, Coach. Coach said if you want to be able to man a team on the gridiron, you got to take the heat. <laughs> so all right coach i hear you man um t i think chris dishman is proving something he he wasn't a head coach before and he's doing a fine job at texas southern but now you're getting into conference play let's see how the tigers from texas southern are able to uh be able to put something out there on the field now let's go and turn our attention to the siac man this has been one of the more entertaining divisions this season in college football wouldn't you say coach yes sir clark atlanta johnson 
C. Smith, which is really what C I W A. But those two teams have opened people's eyes and saying, what in the world is happening here? Coach Allen, he's come in and he's just done a tremendous job with the Panthers at Clark Atlanta. That victory against Bethune-Cookman, last second walk-off, what, kick of 55 yards, right? Right. To be able to win that game in the way they defeated Bethune-Cookman, which we kind of called it. And you you were like, yeah, well, Clark Atlanta can uh, go down to Daytona and win that game. How do you feel about what he's been doing as well as Johnson C. Smith? Well, you know, a lot of people that that knows this guy, and you know, I know him real well. But you know, I don't want to give, not give the head coach his props. But when you have a legend like L.C. Cole on your side, man, <laughs> um, it's it's a difference, man. You those cold brothers, those cold yeah, brothers. <laughs> you talking about a guy that won the D- Division One AA championship? Right. I, I think he's right. the only coach that won. So he knows where the talent is um, across uh, the world. And uh, when you look at this Clark team. Clark has never had a team like this. Um, they're unbelievable in size. They got speed. They got players all across the board. And they're in the lovely city of Atlanta, Georgia, where it's not hard to win. And so, uh, you know, I just think uh, right now, the president is in line with their vision. And um, they're doing right the right things to connect the dots to a championship. Yeah, they are. They have right now their quarterback, Mr. David Wright the third, leads all passers in HBCU football with over eleven hundred passing yards as well as was it thirteen fourteen fourteen, I believe, passing touchdowns, right? Right. And the way he distributes the football Reminds me of how a younger Russell Wilson and a Drew Brees distributes the football. Now, Coach, he doesn't have that height like you love, right? Right. But the one thing that sets him apart, and I can see it, is that he has great anticipation to where to throw the ball. Right. And and a a cornerback has to trust his receivers are going to be at that spot. And you see some young quarterbacks, usually when it comes to their launching point, once they plant that foot, they hesitate. And he's not doing any hesitation. He's planting that foot, getting it out there. Because he knows because of his size, it's a challenge. Right. Right? Now, if he doesn't see it there, one thing he's also doing, he's rushing the football very well. And he's able to scramble or he switches his launching point from the pocket to outside the pocket. And he's able to launch there or he is scrambling to pick up some positive yardage. A quarterback's first job is to do what? Move the chains. Move the chain, (laughs) distribute the ball. Move the chains, baby. And that kid is doing just that. He's only 5'11", he's a junior, and he's coming out of uh, Tampa, Florida. He was at Allen with Coach, and Coach brought him to, (laughs) he brought him to Clark Atlanta. You've got to say that was a great move. Yeah, this kid kind of reminds me of Daniel Richardson from Florida, and you know, not a tall kid, short. But what he has at the quarterback mm-hmm. position, he has a great pre-snap read. You know, he gets at the line, he's calm, cool, and collect. Uh, and his pre-snap read is really uh, excellent because once he sees what the defense is in, he gets Clark in the right play to beat the defense. And that's what I mean by the pre-snap read. If your quarterback is able to get to the line, read the defense, and if your coach has a design play to beat the defense, your quarterback's going to be exceptional well every time. That's what this kid can do. 
eight o'clock at eleven. And um, hey, man, I'm I'm proud of Coach Allen, Coach Cole, what they're doing there. Um, it's unbelievable, man. And um, it just shows, Kyle, you can't put a product on the field and be successful with the fans. If you put the product on the field, the fans are gonna come. Yeah, and they're now flocking to Clark Atlanta, and they have yeah. that great new field that was donated by Arthur Blank and his family, that bright red field, and these guys are doing pretty good. He was 30 of 49. He had one interception. He passed for 61% last week and 374 yards, four touchdowns, and he also rushed for 21 yards. 10 times for 21 yards, but he kept moving the chains and he brought that team back. I think at one point in that game, they were down, was it 21-0? I believe so. I think it was they were down 21-0, man. Think about that. To be able to bring this team back and win the game in that fashion. All right, and we got to go over to Johnson C. Smith in the CIAA. Those guys are doing pretty good, man. And they are 4 and 0. Oh, a surprising team to some, but if you looked at how they played that Florida Bowl last season, um, at the end of the season, they did a very good job there. Shaw is 3 and 1. Winston Salem State is 3 and 1. The North Carolina teams in HBC you football other than North Carolina a and is shocking everybody. What's happening in North Carolina? <laughs> hey, man, you know, uh, I think the, co- you know, man, it, it, it's something about the coaches on the East Coast, man. Dude, I mean, are they in better, you know, uh, situations? I mean, because when you talk about that, you know, everybody right now is, you know, look at what's going on in Hampton. Yeah, you know, the coach, that's another the coach, one. Yeah. Coach just getting hired in the summertime, and <laughs> it's winning. And coach, so, uh, coach, that that's a – remember, we didn't give Hampton much of any chance this oh, season. Oh, man, you're right. You're right. And I, I have to say, Coach is all wrong. He was wrong, not me. Yeah, I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong, man. You, you, you hired a coach in June, and uh, I just thought it was devastating for Hampton. And man, look at look at what he's been able to do in that program. Uh, the Pirates, man, they took it to Howard. <laughs> they showed them <laughs> they were the real HBCU, man. And the Pirates earned the HBCU Plus and FCS stats perform team of the week award last week for their performance uh, and they put it on those guys at Howard. I know Larry Scott that was really an eye opener for Coach Scott man. and I think that team either they were overconfident or they were not prepared to, to withstand what the Pirates put on them. Uh, so kudos to Trent Boykin who is the interim head coach over at uh, Hampton, but he and his staff has done a tremendous job thus far. All right. And, Coach, any matchups that you'd like to focus on other than the ones we just spoke about in the SWAT? <laughs> hey, Kyle, I'm, I'm glad you said that, man. Our listeners, this, this is why I love our listeners, Kyle. I had a listener just to hit me on the email and say, don't forget about the all guard and Mississippi Valley State matchup. They, they call it the, the Dust Bowl. I said, oh, my God. The, the fans are listening. Hey, oh, Kyle wow. T. Moses, the fans are listening, man. Uh, we love our fans. I forgot about it. It's a oh, man. Uh, Valley is what? 0 and 4, Alcorn 1 and 3. Oh man, it <laughs> the dust critical man, must win. Cool. <laughs> yeah, 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 must win for Alcorn, man. I, I just think, man, um, Kyle, do, do, do we say Coach Thomas was ready for this, or do we say, you know, he's falling behind Coach McNair? A lot of people don't like falling behind legends. If you don't have a quarterback, yeah, you got it. <laughs> if you don't, <laughs> if you, you don't can't have, have three quarterback. quarterbacks, yeah, yeah. 
I, I'm just going to say uh, it like that, man. You don't have a quarterback that you can right. trust at that position right now. Uh, right. Okay, so I'm going to go through these SWAC matchups. Alabama State at Bethune-Cookman today. Who wins? Uh, the game is canceled. Oh, yeah. Apologies. Yeah, it is canceled uh, because right. of the hurricane and right. prayers out there to a lot of people. Families were devastated. This was a... Yeah. Huge hurricane. The dam, one of the major dams in Tennessee may break today as a result of that dam. Uh, I mean, the water and the the, the forces of the winds that have gone through that area. So, and I think the system is kind of sitting around that area right now. So, guys, prayers to you guys. Prayers over in North Carolina. People in North Carolina, South Carolina were affected. It, it was just a huge storm. Atlanta was without power in some areas and major flooding there as well. So right. prayers to everybody from Florida, Georgia, and up to Tennessee and elsewhere. Um, Alcorn, Mississippi Valley. All right, Coach, you talked about it. Who's going to win, man? Tough, tough game. Um, both teams are equally uh, matched up in, at this point. Um, it's going to come down to coaching. And I have to get an edge to Coach Thomas. Now, Valley is playing at an all-time high, even though the record doesn't show it. Uh, Alcorn has a quarterback problem. And if you don't have a quarterback, yeah. you don't have nothing. This is another mentor-student type of game. Uh, Cedric Thomas was the mentor of uh, Mississippi Valley's coach, and he is about to face his uh, big brother. He called him, he called him like big brother coach, he called him. Uh, so right. we'll see how that goes. Prairie View versus Grambling. Uh, I had the G-Man winning this one, 28-21. Jackson State at Texas Southern. Coach T.C. Taylor is going to get it right, but it's going to be a low-scoring ball game. I think it's going to be 10-3 Jackson State. 10-3. Wow. Okay. All right. And if you go over to the MEAC, NCCU against the Spartans. Well, Kyle... You know, when you call, you know, you watch Coach Trey the Truth Oliver uh, press conference last week. He said no mercy, Kyle. He doesn't feel <laughs> sorry. You know, uh, people are questioning, is he the top coach? And he said he had to show the fans he is the number one coach at HBCU. Uh, just this NCU team is just too tough right now. Okay. Uh, so they're playing well. Yeah, they're playing well on both sides of the ball in all three phases. And um, I just had them beating the Spartans today. Uh, okay. He's going to take, okay. take the ease on his old coach. Okay. 28 to 7. All right. Let's go to the next one. South Carolina State, North Carolina a &T. South Carolina State winning big. Shinnis Berry is going to do a great job in this game. I got them winning big in this game. Howard is playing for the first time Princeton University. How do you see that one? Howard has issues right now in quarterback. I see Princeton all over all over them in this. Delaware State against Campbell. Uh, Campbell's going to win it. Morgan State taking on Stony Brook. Morgan State playing at an all-time high. I have them in an upset today. Morgan State will win this ball game. Whoa. All right. All right. I like that one, man. Okay, guys, those are some of the major games that are on the schedule. Uh, CIAA as well as SIAC, we're going to have more on those matchups on HBCU Legends. Every week we have the big scoreboard. Watch us go to our big scoreboard. We have all the updates from the games that uh, you can be able to take a look at. Uh, so it's going to be HBCU football, the big scoreboard on HBCU Legends. Uh, some good games out there. We got Morehouse, and they are playing Benedict today. 
Uh, that should be a good one in the SIAC. Morehouse coming off their first win as well as Benedict, who had a walk-off win. That was a good one. Uh, the Trojans of Virginia State against Fayetteville State. Now, this is an important one, Coach. Uh, Virginia State with that loss, how do you see this one? Uh, Virginia State's going to rebound. I think they have a great ball club. Uh, they've been at the top of their league for a minute. Um, I think they're going to win this one in a landslide, probably 35-28. All right, Bowie State against Winston-Salem State. Winston-Salem has to get it together. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know what's going on over there, but Bowie State is, uh, is at an all-time high. You know, and they're playing great football right, right now. I think Bowie State will win the ball game. Okay, now Winston Salem's three and one now. Yeah, but Bowie State, you know, I, I, I'm the the Morgan, the Bowie's, the Maryland football right now is at all time high. So I'm gonna go with Bowie State. I don't know about that one. I'm gonna go after the the opposite way. Now this is a big one. Shaw against Virginia Union. The Panthers had a, a loss. Um, it's been shocking how they've been losing. You know, they, they haven't had the season that, that everybody thought they were going to have. Um, the loser of this one has to be out of the race, in my opinion. What's your thoughts there? So, big time program in Raleigh, North Carolina, under the legendary uh, former coach there. Coach Dad Asbury got that program rolling years ago. I just think right now, man, when you look at the position Shaw is in and what they're doing as a university in the lovely city of Raleigh, North Carolina, Shaw going to be too much for them. I think Shaw going to win the ball game. We well, got a lot of great things going on there. Student enrollment is a, it's just a lot of unbelievable things going on at Shaw. Okay. So I'm going to take Shaw in this one. We're getting down to the wire. Let's get right to these right quick. Uh, West Virginia State taking on West Virginia Westland. Who wins? Just give me the winner. Uh, West Virginia State. Albany State against Kentucky State. Uh, Albany State. Clark Atlanta against Lane. Ooh, now that's a big one. Clark. All right. All right. Alabama and m against Florida and m was canceled, right? I mean, um, yeah, that was canceled, right? So, all right, guys. Well, Kyle T. Mosley, that's Coach Daryl Stewart. Coach is going to be a good one. Maybe we have to talk tomorrow and get some um, these people off the ledge after these score, final scores. That's <laughs> going to happen. Um, it looks like it's going to be a very contentious week five in HBCU football. And let's have a good day. Be safe out there, guys, and still prayers to everybody who were affected by Hurricane Helene. Take care, Coach. Oh, Coach, tell everybody how they can find you on the World Wide Web. You can find me at TycoonLeague2 at gmail.com. Also, HBCU Legends on the podcast with Coach Kyle T. Mosley. <laughs> Coach, your boy, for you, boy, funny. <laughs> All right, I'm Kyle <laughs> T. Mosley, and you can check us out at hbculegends.net. You can also go to HBCU Legends on all our social media platforms, and you can check me out at KTMOZE on X as well. And guys, have a good, safe weekend, and let's play yeah. some HBCU football. Yeah. Take care. New Balance recently announced the addition of All-American Cooper Flag to the NB family, joining Cameron Brink and an elite player roster in the brand's mission of growing the game with the next generation of athletes. In part of New Balance's ongoing commitment to supporting athletes off the court, the Boston-based brand plans to work with Cooper on community initiatives in his home state of Maine. To shop the two-way V5, Hesse Low V2, and all New Balance basketball products, visit newbalance.com today. Fall is the perfect time to cozy up with a hot drink and enjoy the season. And now with the Northwest Federal Credit Union credit card, you can make the most of this time of year. 
earn double points on everything you purchase with your NWFCU credit card. Every swipe gets you closer to your next reward. Don't miss this exclusive offer. Visit your nearest NWFCU branch or apply online at nwfcu.org. Northwest Federal Credit Union, official credit union of the Washington Commanders. Terms and conditions apply.